Hello. <laughs> I think we're live. <clears throat> we should be here, ready to go, hopefully. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear me. It's been a while since I've done a live. This feels weird. Um, okay, I got to get these links for the books. Um, for those of you joining in the replay, um, so today, because we have a, a 10,000 uh, subscriber special, the special part is I'm giving away all my ebooks. So I'm going to be doing uh, two links here, two different types of links. Um, let's see here. They both go to Google Drive. So I don't think you need a Google account, but you will need to be able to access that. Um, I want to share and see here. Um, now, this is a temporary link. Okay, I'm not going to have this up forever for everybody just to get my books for free. Um, obviously, like they're available on Amazon if you want to buy them. Um, done. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to get this. Did I actually get the link? Copy link. Okay. I'm going to put this link here um, in the chat. I'll also put it in the description, um, which I don't know how to access right now. <laughs> um Okay, so Javi is here, Finn is here, Miguel is here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, King Lion is here. I am pretty good. How are you? Um, I also have, uh, so this this first link I, I gave, um, this is a link to Google Drive where you can access the books and um, the audio files for the uh, Black Cat story and stuff. Um, and you can download them. I recommend, like, again, this link will not be available forever. So if you don't download them, you will lose access eventually. It's probably going to be up for maybe a week or two. Um, if that, I don't know exactly when I'm going to take it down, but it's it's going to be temporary. You have at least a week. Um, I'm also going to give you this link, which is a zipped version um, of everything. Copy link. Um, and because I know some people, like especially if you're on your phone, maybe you don't want to download the zipped version. But um, if you're on your computer, you can download that as like one easy thing and then extract it. Um, or if you just want like one of the books, then you can use the first link and just like get the files for that one book. Um, so you have two options there. Um, both of these will be available for maybe about a week or so. And then uh, they will be gone. So... This is my, uh, I know it's not much, but this is my thanks to all of you, um, especially anybody who's new and who um, is interested in my books, but maybe you haven't bought them and you're like, I don't know. Well, now's your chance to get it for free. So there you go. Um, I think my poetry book is also in that uh, <laughs> little bonus that nobody cares about. But um, I've had a couple of people say that they, uh, they um, looked at my poetry book and they thought it was pretty good. But anyway, um, Rafael is here. Welcome, welcome. Good, thank you for asking. Welcome. Uh, Rodrigo, hi. Hello, hello. Uh, what have you been up to, if you mind me asking? We say if you don't mind me asking. Um, I guess you could use the positive, but we pretty much, yeah, we pretty much always use the negative. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so what have I been up to? <laughs> A lot of work, 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 work. Um, so when I left you guys, I was doing a lot of like uh, food delivery and stuff, DoorDash, whatever. I'm still doing a lot of that. Um, still working usually 10 plus hours a day. Still working on my finances. <laughs> Paying off debts and stuff. Um, the, uh, the economy is not helping. Um, some days are better than others. Uh, at the beginning of the year, I, I could make like pretty decent money in a day. Now working the same hours, I'm like I'm making about half as much. So it's it's kind of a struggle, but you know it is what it is. Um, also, as you guys know, I'm I'm not fully back here. Um, for anybody who's like, hey, English access back, it's like yeah, technically. <laughs> as I said in my video, I posted. Uh, you're welcome, King Lion. Um, you know, I will be posting content, but it's it's not going to be, you know, like it was necessarily. I know I wasn't like the most consistent before, <laughs> but um, like if you guys don't hear from me for, for like two or three months at a time, 
that that's going to be normal now. Like I don't plan to not produce content for two or three months, but if that happens, it's not like I disappeared forever. It's not like I have a problem. It's just like I haven't either gotten around to or, or been able to um, make content um, for whatever reason, <clears throat> whatever reason. My throat's kind of yeah. But um, it's great to know that you're okay. It doesn't happen to you. Yeah, no, um, I'm fine <laughs> for the most part. I'm alive. <laughs> All right. But uh, yeah, as far as I know, I'm, I'm generally quite healthy, um, fairly sane, um, I think. So I have that. Um, he said he'd take a break in the community thingy. Um, yeah, well, not everybody sees those, um, which, you know, it's like you make announcements, but not everybody's going to see them. Um, but either way, I mean, also, like, <laughs> when you're gone for, like, what is it, like, eight, nine months, ten months, something like that, um, that's a long break. <laughs> so um, I was going to, uh, there was actually one point where I was considering just, like, shutting down the channel entirely, um, but I decided against that. Um, one, because I thought, well, maybe I'll come back at some point, um, two, because like, obviously these videos are, are providing, uh, still providing value. Like I'm, st I'm still getting new people and stuff, even if I'm not making content. So, um, I want that to be available and, you know, anybody who wants to like, maybe you've seen a video, but you want to go back and like, Oh, what did he say about this? You know, like, I don't want you to lose access to that. Um, would have been a loss. Yeah. Um, so the funny thing is, <laughs> so uh, I had like the memberships and everything going um, and I, I shut all that down because um, like that's just not fair. Like, <laughs> you know, even if 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 any of you wanted to, I don't think it's it's fair. Like if I'm not showing up making content regularly, like I, I don't deserve the uh, the membership support. But uh, what was I going to say? I lost my thought there. Um, Yeah. So with uh, like the, the monetization, right? Cause things are still monetized. Um, so if you like, if you exclude the, the memberships and stuff, just like basic ad revenue, when I left you guys, I was making about $30 a month, roughly on non ad revenue, which I don't get paid out until it's like a hundred. So I don't even see that every month. Um, now that we have, you know, th over 3000 more subscribers than when I left, you would think the ad revenue would have gone up, but no, <laughs> it's still about $30 a month, which is kind of frustrating, <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> like I can't control that. Part of that is probably because of the economy with like declining ad rate, um, you know, costs and stuff or, um, people making ads and stuff. I don't know. The economy is like crazy. It's like, it's up, it's down. There's good, there's bad. There's, I don't know. I don't know what's happening, but um things are getting tough for sure for a lot of people so that might be contributing to uh it staying at the same amount luckily it hasn't gone down but um uh welcome steve long time no see as for everybody <laughs> uh hope you're doing well taylor swift is saving the economy is she i don't i don't pay any attention to much of anything actually <laughs> um and i i for the most part stopped paying attention to taylor swift once like after her first album because her first album was country and i like country i listen to a lot of country um and then once she got all pop i kind of like stopped caring um not that there's anything wrong with it she makes a lot of great music but uh that's a weird glitch. Oh, never mind. It's I can't get rid of that. That's weird. I accidentally hovered over the emoji. It's, it's like it has like a text describing it, but it won't go away when I click off of it. Or <laughs> so <laughs> that's that was confusing. Anyway, uh, our future live streams within the realm of possibility. Uh, they're within the realm of possibility. Yes, <laughs> many things are within the realm of possibility. Um, Are they likely? No. Um, 
for special things like i mean if we hit like 50k and maybe 25k you know those are landmarks you know um i like to do specials and stuff but uh outside of that um i mean definitely if we had 100k there's definitely gonna be a live stream for sure like that's gonna be amazing uh, if we ever get there <laughs> but um I'm definitely not going to give any illusion because <laughs> I know you guys like the live streams and, and I, I like to doing them as well. But um, for various reasons, at least at this moment, uh, uh, it's just not not really in the cards. Um, perhaps at some point. You know, like maybe it'll it'll become more likely, maybe, but um, for the foreseeable future, this is pretty much all you got. <laughs> so, <laughs> if there's some big awesome question that you you want me to explain, you know, live rather than in, in a typed comment, uh, now would be the time to to ask it. Um, I became a Swifty. Is that, is that what is Taylor Swift fans are called Swifties? That's weird. <laughs> but okay. Um yeah, I mean she, obviously she's mega mega successful, mega popular. Um she's done very, very well. Um most people probably don't even listen to her original country stuff. I don't know. But even her country stuff, it was a little poppy, but it had a a lot of that had a lot of good country sound. Um anyway that's a whole other topic though they're like most of you guys probably don't even care about country music but there's there's uh country music seems to go through this weird um this isn't related to taylor swift necessarily it's sort of an indirect thing that connected in my brain but it goes through these these weird cycles um where it becomes like sort of more poppy and and gets gets away from like the actual sound of country music which is like a lot of violins a lot of steel guitars maybe some banjos um uh, th fiddle rather than violin. I like to call them fiddles. Um, but uh, we're going through one of those periods right now, um, which is unfortunate because like all the, the big popular country music that's being pushed out, it's good music. A lot of it is fine. It's just, it's not actually country, <laughs> maybe a subgenre of country, but not actual country. Um, but because of that, I've actually discovered a lot of really, really, really great, like smaller artists on Spotify in my, desperate search to find real country music um and it's if i if i hadn't done that uh, of course a lot of these people if the if nashville was actually punch pumping out you know like real country music instead of all this like pop hip-hop um type stuff again it's good music there's nothing wrong with it necessarily but it's just not quite country um then uh, a lot of these smaller artists would actually probably not be so small so um, like there's one in particular, I'm just like, this guy is gold and he should be huge, but he only has like a thousand monthly listeners on Spotify. And I'm like, oh my God, such an undiscovered gem. That aside, <laughs> my little country rant. Um, what are you working on now? A welcome ordinary guy. Uh, do you want to quit teaching eventually? Um, so yeah, I guess I'll answer that. That's a little bit of a big question. Um, I'll come back to you in a second. Don't worry. Um, let me put that in the back of my mind for a second. Are you still going to be doing the mouth posture thing on italki? Like the other thing, not consultations. Uh, uh, Delio is here. Welcome, Delio. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Now, I'm not back in my normal capacity, but I am making content, um, as I've said. So uh, just so everybody's aware of that. Um, I mean, I listen to Taylor's country music. Oh, good. Um, Oh, well, you, I guess you're a Swifty for sure. You're hardcore then. <laughs> if you go listen to her old country stuff, yeah. Um, I think she had like this eras thing recently. I saw something about that. Um, I don't know if any of the, maybe there's some of her country in there, I assume. Um, does anyone really hate pop? Like all of it? I, a lot of things sound good. Um, but yeah, I had pop. There's nothing wrong with pop. There's a lot of good music. It's just I country punk, particularly pop punk, 
which is funny. It's like, it's not really pop, but obviously it, it, it crosses over kind of, um, but country punk and, um, I guess what you would consider like emo slash goth. Those are my, uh, my main preferred genres. Um, lots of rock too. I like rock music. Um, but especially the, 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 the country, the punk, the emo, that type of, of sound and a lot of sad music. I listen to a lot of sad music, <laughs> not only sad music, but a lot of sad music. A lot of pop music is designed to be like really upbeat and stuff. That's probably one reason why I don't listen to a lot of it. Cause, um, I tend to listen to a lot more, um, sad music <clears throat> but anyway uh so what am i working on right now mostly just uh trying not to die <laughs> um so as i mentioned probably before you got in here um, i'm still doing like deliveries and stuff like i was before still working 10 plus hours a day uh doing that i don't honestly don't have too much time for a lot of other things um still trying to like work on my finances and and get that into a better place um, I mean, I still have like student loans I'm trying to pay and stuff. I haven't had to pay those because they were frozen, but starting next month, uh, I think it's at the end of the next month or something, the, they're going to become active again. And so, yeah, uh, <clears throat> got things that I got to pay for. Um, so a lot of my time goes to that, like every day. I, I don't really take days off. Um, I work pretty much every day. Every once in a while, like this last Thursday, my brain will just be like, nope, you aren't going to work today. You need to take a day off. <laughs> and so I will just not do anything that day or maybe like a half day or something. Um, but for the most part, I work <clears throat> 10 plus hours a day, at least eight, at least seven to eight hours in a day for sure. Uh, minimum, but every day I don't take weekends off or anything like that. Uh, in fact, when I'm done here um, at about one o'clock or so, I'm going to be off to work. So, um, I have many things I want to do. I have sort of some things I'm doing like here. I'm trying to, you know, make some content for you guys and then whatever, um, trying to sort of come back in some capacity. Um, so there's that, um, what else? There's not a whole lot else really. Unfortunately, still watching anime. <laughs> um always lots of good anime to watch but that's not something i'm working on that's just something i i do i guess um <clears throat> there's lots of things i want to work on <laughs> for sure <laughs> there's just not many things that i am working on right now because i spend so much time working to you know pay for stuff um do you want to quit teaching eventually uh so well i'm actually sort of Technically, at the end of this month, I am going to quit teaching. Um, this is roughly more or less my my cutoff um, where I'm kind of out of the the game. Um, now, there's two things for that. So there's the consultations, and that uh, I will continue to do at least through the end of the year. Probably, I'm going to extend that. Um, I know it's not necessarily what everybody wants. Um, through consultations, you can get mouth posture stuff. So this is going to sort of tie into King Lion's question as well. Um, I'm, let me lay this out. The mouth posture, there's, there's a lot that I've, I've learned about mouth posture, both in, in sort of like exactly what it is and how to teach it, um, over the time that I've been gone, um, that I have like no content on, um, all the basic stuff that, that I originally made content on. All of that stuff is is super valid and correct and useful. Um, so there's it's just more info um, and more useful things on top of it. Um, but uh, I have you know I've worked with a couple more students. I'm finishing up with with one more uh, one one last student, um, and she's she's not quite there. But you know I sort of told her like I have this sort of like like this cutoff, and she's made a lot of progress. Oh my god, and I've learned so much about. Um, cer certain details of the posture from her. She's a Russian speaker, so it's particularly relevant to Russian, but a lot of it also applies to Spanish and probably many other languages. Um, <clears throat> at some point, so my hopes for mouth posture, like I, I do really believe in mouth posture. I do think that it's, it's like if, if you want to sound native, 100% native, you have to have the right posture. 
And people who either don't know about posture or uh, don't specifically try to develop it, but still end up with like a perfect accent in a, in a foreign language, they through whether because they have talent or just because, um, you know, a lot of like the hard work that they put in and a lot of, the, you know, like the, the paying attention and the tweaking that they did in this and whatever, however you want to explain it, they they somehow developed that posture without trying to develop the posture. That That's my theory. I, I think that the, the posture itself is, and I've, I've worked with so many students who have accents that are so small, like they're, 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 almost, they're like so good. But if you really listen carefully um, or if they talk long enough, um, you start to kind of notice, okay, there's a little something off, not just like in some words or some sounds, but there's sort of this underlying thing that's off. Um, and it, it seems to me to universally invariably be posture. Um, like if, if you don't have the posture, you're not going to get perfect. Now, for some people, that's fine. They don't care. You can get 99%. You sound pretty much native. And, and if, if you're fine with that, you're fine with that. Like you, as I've said before, you don't have to be perfect. But if your goal is to have 100% native accent, you have to have mouth posture. In fact, when I go, obviously, I when I do like a southern accent, it's sort of like a mixed accent because there's different, you know, southern accents. Um, but I've noticed uh, as I've tried to pay attention to details of the posture and stuff, um, you know, like like when I'm singing country music, is sometimes there's something of an accent, sometimes there's not. Um, or if I'm just sort of like playing with sort of a southern type of sound. I'll actually notice that there's certain things that shift with how I hold my mouth. I'm not just doing sounds differently to sound Southern. I'm actually holding certain things a little differently. A lot of it's the same, but there's actually some differences. So um, if I go and I start trying to talk more like this, there's a certain way that I'm, I'm holding, especially the back of my tongue. feels like maybe it's just a little bit higher in a way. I don't know. It's, it's I haven't gone and, and, nailed down those details but because i paid so much attention to this i can feel that there's something a little bit different with how i'm holding my mouth in general like even if i'm not speaking i'm just sort of like ready to speak like that i feel like there's sort of a little shift in the tension in my mouth so um posture 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 posture, posture. now i mentioned that because um my initial idea was like, this is it. Like, this is the magical key. This is the thing. Like, it's going to give you a native accent. And, you know, like, maybe you don't have to directly study it in order to develop it because there are probably people who do that. Um, maybe they have talent. Maybe they don't. I don't know. But I want to, you know, create a thing that you know, anybody, regardless of talent, you know, can go through a step-by-step -step process that, you know, will apply to everybody. That was my original goal. And I do think that's still valid and useful. Um, but after working with people, it, it's probably partially because I didn't have all the pieces at first and through the process, I kind of had to find some of the pieces. Um, but I noticed that there's a lot of people who started working with me. They seemed, you know, really earnest, really motivated, really whatever. And then for, there's several reasons, potential reasons I can think of that we don't have to go into, but for various reasons, um, they just like stopped showing up um, or they would keep showing up. Um, I had a couple students like this where like they would keep showing up, but they're like super, super busy, right? Well, I mean, we're all busy, but they're super busy um, and they're just like, they're not putting in the required amount of work, even though I tell them like, hey, you need to be doing like this certain amount. You need to be doing this practice, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I see them like at pretty much every class, like, well, I tried, I did a little of this. And it's like, it's, it's not enough, right? It's like, it's, it's a serious major endeavor it's like like if you're going to learn a musical instrument right it's like you you can't just like say like oh well i'm going to pluck a few strings on the guitar five minutes a day like okay you'll learn some stuff but you're not going to be playing you know any songs you know within the next like six months or something it's, it's probably not going to happen um so maybe twinkle twinkle little star um so i mean something is better than nothing but like especially if you want to make progress in a reasonable amount of time rather than it taking like one two three years or however long like you need to to put in you, you put in consistent serious effort and be doing the right things and it seems like a lot of people especially when i was because i was making everybody go through phase zero and i lost quite a few people because of that because they didn't understand why like they're like i'm gonna trust you and do it and then they just stopped showing up because I assume because they 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 couldn't see why they were they they felt like they were wasting their time. The people who got through phase zero, they were like, "Oh, 
I see why we did phase zero and I'm super glad I did. But until you go through phase zero and actually succeed, uh, according to, you know, my feedback, until you do that, um, you don't actually really experientially understand why I created phase zero. But everybody who made it through, they're like, oh, my God, thank you for 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 making phase zero. Um, it's not required, but um, it's it's super powerful. It's super useful. Um, and again, I wanted to create a step by step thing that everybody can follow. Uh, regardless of talent, so it's it's really like the lowest common denominator from the ground up. Ground up. My throat is really dry today. Um, that aside, so I've I've had struggles with that, right? And that's one reason why, um, like, so I was like generally teaching, and then I shifted to pronunciation only. And then when I discovered mouth posture, I was like, I can't teach pronunciation the way I was teaching it before. It has to be mouth posture. Um, and so I was like, this is all or nothing. It's like I developed this mouth posture course and create this like super successful, you know, mouth posture thing, whether I'm teaching or it's a product or whatever, um, or I'm done. And because I've had issues with like people disappearing and, um, you know, like uh, just like the, the process taking people longer than I thought it would take. Um, which is probably a bit of my my own uh, language ability bias. Um, uh, because of these things, um, I kind of was like, at least for now, I'm I'm done. Like even with the mouth posture, like I'm I've kind of I, I haven't necessarily given up on it. Um, I do like I th again I think that it works. I think it's valid. I think it's powerful, but it's it's just like. I don't know if I want to deal with like people, you know, showing up and then like coming and then just like disappearing, you know, because it's it's very frustrating. Um, but again, that, that, I mean, that's partially my feeling because like the job of the teacher is to make it interesting and, and to keep the student um, going. Uh, but not everything is for everybody at the same time. And so, you know, you might try something and be like, yeah, this isn't for me. And then that's fine as well. So there's all these factors. There's all these things. Um, some of it I've. I've put blame on myself some of it is you know um, not necessarily my fault outside of my control so it is what it is um what i do plan to do is make at least one more big video i don't know when that will come at least one more big video talking about all the other things i've learned about mouth posture um i made a couple shorts talking about a couple of those details um already but uh so you guys that will at least have that and and I think that would be good. Um, through the consultations, if you want to sign up for a consultation and be like, hey, teach me about mouth posture, give me feedback on mouth posture. I've been working on it for like the last month. You know, can you just tell me how I sound? That is perfectly fine. Um, I have no problem continuing to talk about mouth posture, to continuing to work with people on mouth posture. Um but it will not be a you know full-on course it will not be a traditional structured like okay this is what we're learning today um it will be a consultation right um at the beginning right if you're just like hey i have these questions about mouth posture, like you can ask whatever questions you want whatever we can go as deep into the mouth posture as you want it's just not a course okay um and uh like because they're consultations, you know, like, uh, I don't know, I don't really want to put like a restriction on it. But it's like, I feel like because some people might be like, well, okay, I'm gonna take a consultation every day. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you wanted to, but it's it's usually like, okay, like, you know, I give you some feedback, you go work on it for, you know, at least a few days, maybe a week. And then if you want to come back, you know, for for more feedback, then you can. Um, that's kind of how I'm thinking of it. Um, I don't have a whole lot of people I'm working with on consultations, so I have space, you know, if you want to do more frequently. But um, if I end up getting like a lot of people I'm doing consultations with, then you know, and it might be like once a week, once every two weeks that I can I can see a particular person. We're definitely nowhere near that. So sign up if you want to. Link it, link should be in the description. <laughs> um, but uh, and then the consultations are also uh, more expensive. Now, the mouth posture course, once I developed it, like if I was like, OK, this is done, I got it solved. I was going to charge at least $80 an hour, which is like the max that you can charge on italki, which that's only because usually I, I charge pretty low because I, I want to like 
you know, people who are in poor countries and stuff, I wanted to, them to still have access. But given, you know, the time that I've put into it, um, the difficulty that it, it, it can take to like teach it um, and the, the effort that's required, usually people who pay more, they're actually going to like continue to show up, <laughs> um, et cetera, et cetera, various reasons. Um, I was actually going to put a higher price on this particular thing. Uh, and it was at, I want to say $35 because it was still in development. Um, so that would have been a big, big change. The consultations, which again, the consultations for anything, not just mouth posture, but if you want to do mouth posture specifically, you can, um, those are, I think I have them at $45. Um, so it's a bit more pricey than what I was charging for the mouth posture in development course, uh, but it's a lot cheaper than what I would have charged for the fully developed mouth posture course. So, you know, um, that that's the biggest change there is, is you probably won't see me every day uh, and it's going to be a little more expensive than it was before. But mouth posture is still available if you want to work with work on that uh, with me on italki. Um, so that's, that's the state of that. Uh, at some point, maybe it'll become an actual full course or product or something that I, I develop, but for the time being, it's kind of in the air. You know, you can talk to me about it if you want. I'll make a bit more content on it, but, um, it's, it's kind of just floating as, as far as a, a finished, complete, like packaged product or course that doesn't exist and may not exist at any point. Uh, but maybe, um, anyway, so we have some more things here. Let's see. I took a while on that. Sorry. Um, it was a big point that I, I knew I was going to have to address. Um, and technically I didn't answer the ordinary guy's question, uh, the ordinary and ordinary guy's question. Uh, do you want to quit teaching eventually? Um, as I may have said before, like I never planned to become an English teacher. It's kind of something I stumbled on with italki. Um, something that uh, definitely preferable compared to other things. <laughs> um, but for various reasons, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of leaving it aside from the consultations. Consultations, I don't necessarily consider teaching, although I still am doing some teaching. Um, but I'm kind of over the what we would normally consider teaching with like the courses and, and all the structure and stuff. Um, and I, I, I did that for almost 10 years at this point. Um, and uh, I kind of feel like it's, it's time to move on um, from active teaching. Right. Uh, so who knows? Maybe I'll come back to that, but definitely don't get your hopes up. I highly doubt that. Um, but again, the consultations will be available, um, at least for the foreseeable future, if nothing else. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'll ask like three things that have been bugging me for a while. No one's been able to answer properly. <laughs> All right, no pressure. <laughs> um, and then no one's been able to answer um, Technically, so putting a comment, I mean, that's okay. But yeah, it probably would be better to do the end. Um, uh, Olivia Rodrigo's last song sounds punkish. Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I listened to like two of her songs that uh, obviously were very big and popular. Um, they they weren't bad, uh, but I haven't. I don't like regularly listen to her, so I'll have to look up her uh, her most recent song. Um, I also listen to a lot of punk in uh, in um, Japanese as well. And recently, I got the idea. I don't know why I didn't think about this before, but like punk bands in Spanish. Like it never occurred to me that there'd be Spanish punk bands. And I looked that up recently and I found a couple good artists. I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. So yeah, I also do it. And uh, I've listened to German punk for quite a while. Uh, Zilb Zilbermont is uh, my favorite. But uh, yeah, so other languages too for the punk. Don't really have that option for country. <laughs> um, emo, I don't know. Uh, I prefer that to be in English because... With the punk, like with the emo, it's really like lyric based. I like the sound too, but it's like it's lyrics. Like, and if I don't understand the lyrics, it's kind of like there's almost no point. Um, where a lot of the other music, like even if I don't understand everything, it's it's fun to listen, <clears throat> fun to listen to. So, okay, 
Uh, vampire, bad idea. What? Explain. <laughs> vampire is... So are those arrows pointing to bad idea or are you saying vampire is greater than bad idea? <laughs> Probably arrows. Um, I think that's greater than simple. I always get this confused. My brain is not designed for that. Um, oh, why are you mentioning vampires? Uh, I'm really confused. Is there something about vampires? Oh, maybe this. Because <laughs> that's Batman. <laughs> but anyway. Um, but bad idea, right? It's fun. Oh, maybe, oh, that's probably the song name. I see. Okay, that makes more sense. I'll look those up. Uh, where are you from, if you don't mind telling? All right, so Rafal's going in the chat asking people where they're from. Cool, cool. Engagement, I like it. I'm from Poland. Wow. Very good. Rafal. Yeah, that looks like that L has like the little line on it. This is not a Polish name. Like, I wouldn't think of this as a Polish name. <laughs> I'm not particularly familiar with Polish, but uh, the one Polish name I know, because I've seen it several times and I had a student with this name, is um, I think it's pronounced like Mariusz or something like that. And there's like an like an S and a Z at the end, which is <laughs> kind of crazy. But um, Polish seems like a very interesting language. Um, teaching English doesn't pay the bill much. Uh, well, I mean, if you're someone like Rachel's English, <laughs> it probably pays the bill very well. <laughs> um, but uh, in my experience up to this point, I mean, when I started, I had no experience and I was charging like $5 an hour. Yeah, $5 an hour. <laughs> because I had no experience and like, you know, that's what am I going to do? Charge like, you know, actual like minimum wage or something? No. Um, and that quickly, you know, I upped it to six, I upped it to seven. And over the course of like a year, I got it to like 10. And then um, as I learned more, I got my teaching certificate, blah, blah, blah. You know, I upped it and, and offered different things and whatever. So, um, you know, it's, it, it has earning potential. Um, obviously I'm self-employed, I'm doing it myself. So, you know, if I did like marketing and stuff, I could grow it and whatever, which I hate marketing, but, um, at the end of the day, you know, it's like, like anything else, you could grow it, you could scale it, um, up to a certain point and then make more money out of it. But if I really wanted to do that, I probably would have already done that. <laughs> You know, and it's it's a lot of work to get to that point. So, um, hopefully, with this channel, you know, the, it'll get to the point where I'm making decent revenue from the ads or something, which, you know, may never happen. But um, that's weird. Hold on a second. That notification seems like a lie. Um, but in my experience, like the, 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 <sighs> I also have me personally, I have a cap. This is my main, main problem is like, cause I know that there's some English teachers, they'll teach like eight hours a day. just like seeing student after student, after student, after student, after student, after student. Right. Um, uh, obviously there's lots of teachers who work in classrooms. So that's a different situation. Um, me, like, number one, I don't really want to work in an actual classroom. Um, uh, but I learned fairly early on that I have sort of a, I guess, a, a mental cap <laughs> um, where, number one, I it's really difficult for me to go from one, stu one student to another student. So if I have, like, nine to 10 o'clock and then 10 to 11 o'clock, it's really hard for me to shift gears between students. Um, and I can do it, but it's like, it takes extra, extra mental load for me to make that, that shift. Um, and then I also kind of feel like, well, I, I need like, like at least a five minute break between, but you know, it's like, I can't put five minute breaks on italki. Um, so I, I would always put like at least a half hour break usually between classes. Um, in some cases I might have back to back ones, but I would always like a little bit of a break. Um, and I noticed like if I tried to do more than like four, maybe five lessons in a day, um, it would just like, I would be so mentally exhausted and, and overwhelmed. Um, like if I just did that like one day, it's like, it's okay. But if I did that every day, like I was doing for a while, it's just like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't really handle it. Um, so, you know, maybe that's just me complaining. <laughs> maybe that's just, you know, something with with uh, my brain or like the way that I teach. Maybe, it, you know, 
because uh, you guys like how I teach. It's, a lot of people say it's unique. Well, maybe that takes a lot of mental resources because the way I connect things and, and whatever, I don't know. Um, but for whatever reason, it's it's. I, I feel like I have sort of that cap of how much I can do in a day. And so unless I'm charging, you know, like 50 to $100 an hour, which I could get to, I guess, but um, unless I'm charging that much, uh, doing, you know, three, four, maybe five classes a day is not really going <laughs> to, it's going to pay the bills, but it's not going to do a whole lot more than that. Um, like maybe give me some savings, but definitely not the most lucrative job for sure. Um, okay. Maybe not. I always get caught in every comment or every question, um, like caught up in, um, Okay, when people say, uh, which by the way, really quick question for you guys who are here. Um, I want to make like super short, preferably unedited. I know it's better to sort of edit and put like little flashy things and keep your attention, but I don't really have the time for all that, honestly. <laughs> um, super short, like short version, less than a minute, unedited, um, non-pronunciation content. I know a lot of people are here for pronunciation. As I've said before, this isn't technically a pronunciation channel. That's just what I focused on to like start building it. But I have like my preposition stuff and whatever. And I've I've thought about making like you know, like little like oh what's the difference between like why do we say in the bus or sorry not in the bus on the bus or in a car you know like like little things like that. Um, I don't know if, if any of you guys are like interested in like little short content like that um, that I can just like relatively easy pump out. If, if you saw my recent shorts, I have like a, a mic in my car and then like as I'm, you know, driving and working, I can, you know, make content like that. That's the easiest way for me to do it. Um, but it would be nice if, if I did more than just pronunciation. So I don't know. Um, I know different people want different things. So let me know if that sounds okay or interesting or whatever okay so when people say it has or what happened usually the t is dropped but i've heard people saying it has and what happened okay without dropping the h and the d being a voice deflect okay um yeah because my first thought was like well we're gonna drop the h <laughs> but yeah so without dropping the h um has it has a problem it has a problem it has it has it has it has it has okay what happened what happened what happened what happened what happened yeah so it exists um maybe it's a voiceless flap t or something uh So a lot of the time we're going to drop the H and that's just a normal link, right? You have a, a, a T or a D at the end of a word. The next word starts in an H. We drop the H flap and link to the vowel. Okay. Um, because there's supposed to be an H there, uh, even though the H and the flap shouldn't coexist because in order to flap, it has to sort of like flap through the h and it's voice voiced um it does exist in this weird thing it's it's sort of like like so if i say like um like if i use an actual d if i say uh bad and hair like bad hair day okay but i keep the h right i say bad hair day so you can have a voice sound and then an h <laughs> right um now, if that voice sound happens to be a flap, it's still voiced, right? I, I don't think we have a voiceless flap. Uh, maybe it's just something I haven't noticed. Um, I'm pretty sure there is no flapped T, as I say. There's only a flap D because it's always voiced. Um, but uh, what I would say here is it's something that can happen. You don't have to care. You don't have to produce it. Um, but uh, what's probably happening is, especially because it's such a common combination, like it has what happened. These are very common. Um, and because we do so commonly do the flap, because the H can technically exist and it can come through, all that's really happening is like you're flapping, but then you're also including the H. Like it's, it's you're sort of switching the voice all the way off and letting the breath come out like really quick before the, the, uh, the vowel sound. 
that can ex- that can happen that can exist like <laughs> um it's not impossible uh but I, I don't think it's something you have to care about. I, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I definitely wouldn't try to reproduce it. You never have to do that. You just say it has or it has or it has, right? There's different options there with that, that T. But trying to reproduce like a flap into an H uh, is not something you have to to try to do or, or care about. It's like if you notice it, it exists. Okay, whatever. Like it's something that can happen. Um Going for 100% is pretty hardcore. I suppose. Um, I assume we're talking about accent. Because <laughs> that's what I was talking about. But uh, yeah, it, it, it definitely can be. Um, part of what I wanted to do with mouth posture was make it... I mean, it still work. But make it seem a little less hardcore. Because it's, it's usually like this mystical, magical thing where it's like, oh, this person has a perfect accent. How did they do that? Oh, they must be so talented or whatever. And it's like, I don't think you need the talent necessarily. <laughs> but um, making like like a straight, reliable path to like, this is how you develop a perfect accent, period. Like it's not a mystical process. You don't need talent for it. It's just like if you follow this and you put in the work, you will develop a perfect accent. <laughs> um, and so it, it becomes less a... I mean, maybe it's still kind of hardcore in the effort, I guess, but it's less this like magical, like, like, uh, oh, I'm going to be perfect, you know, type of thing. And it's more just like a step by step process that that you can develop. Um, so I don't know. Um, definitely still a lot of work. Yeah. Not to be undersold for sure. Uh, your voice has changed it so deep. Is it really? That might just be because my voice is so dry today. I don't know why. Um, maybe because I haven't hydrated today. <laughs> Um, I woke up late, but, uh, I think it probably sounds deeper cause I'm, I'm trying to, you probably notice that sometimes like my voice disappears <laughs> as I'm speaking cause it's, it's dry. And so to compensate, uh, I'm maybe trying to like speak a little bit louder and, and deeper, um, so that I don't hit this, uh, this sort of point where my voice disappears. Um, so that's probably temporary. I saw a little heart. Does YouTube do that now? <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, do, 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 do. Where is it? Oh, welcome, Abdullah, by the way. <laughs> uh, I'm planning on having consultations. Be honest. Good. Perfect. Awesome. That works for me. Um, you can check it out on italki and message me if you have any questions. But um, yeah, if you want to sign up, you can sign up. Uh, it is currently open. Um, right now, if you if you go to sign up, you look at like what my classes are, you will see the mouth posture course. Um, that's only because um, the uh, the student that I've been working with, I want to give them sort of a last opportunity to, to um, schedule a, a couple classes. Um, but they tend to do it like <laughs> randomly. I don't know when they're going to sign up for it. Um, so that that's not actually available <laughs> don't sign up for that one um it's just the consultation that will uh, be grayed out uh, or, or not visible in the near future um but if you see that don't be confused um have you thought of doing the four qualities for all sounds what are the four qualities <clears throat> tell me more <laughs> uh my friend tells me what sounds off i fix it but i think i need something more to be faster um yeah so that's good um that's what I did with Spanish. I do seem to have a bit of uh, a talent for this, uh, so that that kind of helps. But um, the uh, like, you need some sort of feedback, regardless, um, especially if your ears aren't aren't quite trained. Um, and even if it's just another native speaker, that is sufficient. Um, if they can give you accurate feedback, which most natives can give you. Uh, accurate feedback from most things. Some of the subtler details, they may not be able to tell you exactly what it is, but um, they should be able to tell you uh, if you sound perfect or not, right? Like at the very least. Um, and usually, if a sound is is significantly off, they'll they'll notice it for sure. So that's good. Um, uh, definitely continue to do that. Um, and then if you uh, work with me, um, I can help you fill in, you know, any of those gaps. Uh, as you said, probably make it be a little bit faster. Um, it is work though. It is work. Um, and again, it's the posture. I'm there's this one uh, person that um, I've had a couple classes with, and uh, 
she's going to continue to work with me on a consultation basis, but she's a German speaker and her accent is very, very, very good. Like very, very good. Um, everything except maybe her O and her A, which she is able to do uh, the pretty much perfect O and A, but when she's speaking, um, pretty much all of her sounds except for O and A uh, sound good. Like her A, she can do an A. Like it sounds like the right sound. It sounds good. Um, if she focuses, she can do a good O sound, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but even like through her speech and even when she's like really like trying, there's still something that it's, it's, eh, eh, it's a little off and it's the posture. I can hear it. I can, I, I I'm re like, if, <laughs> if you work with me <laughs> and your posture, like, even if, if you have like the basic of English, basics of English posture, but you're just like slightly pushed forward with, from the back or you have like, you're a little, little too tense in the back of the tongue. I will hear it. <laughs> I've had enough practice and, and exposure um, to how people sound with with that type of, of posture, being a different configuration in the back than English. That even like for German, German is also quite far back and, and quite open, it seems, in in, in some ways. Um, but it, it's definitely, it's German and English are farther back than, say, Russian and Spanish, which are more forward. Um, and even for this German speaker, I can tell that she's slightly forward. Like I can hear it if I if I focus on it and I pay attention to it. If I don't pay attention to it, I don't really notice it. But if I if I tune my ears and I'm like, okay, let me listen to this person. Let me listen to their posture. I can hear this is just slightly forward, right? So that's one of the benefits. If you do consult with me, a, a regular native speaker probably won't hear that. They might hear that something is off. Maybe they might be like, I don't know. But for me, I, I will be able to hear a lot of these tiny little more postural details um, that uh, maybe not all of them yet. There's this area up here that I'm, I've only recently become aware of. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I think mouth posture should focus on ear training more than anything else. Any thoughts? <clears throat> so your training is the basis like your, your your input is is the basis obviously like if if you can't input something you can't output something or at least that's the theory i've had some really weird real world cases where um people can produce a sound even though they can't hear it which i don't know how that works <laughs> but it, it does exist um those that's definitely the exception to the rule that doesn't happen very often um but that aside um When it comes to sounds, sound development, right? Like say like, okay, if you want to produce the ah sound, you should be able to hear the difference between a eh and ah, between ah and um, say the start of I, uh, between ah and ah. Okay, obviously like, we can't hear the difference between those. It's probably gonna be hard to, to pinpoint like where the sound is, especially if you're practicing yourself and you're trying to like listen to yourself, you can't hear it. You need somebody else to give you the feedback, okay. Um, if you can hear it, at least, then you can actually tell something's off and then you can, you know, better adjust maybe without needing uh, as much feedback from somebody else. So definitely um, very useful, definitely very uh, powerful. For the mouth posture, my experience so far is that the ear training comes with the development of the posture um and you can ask almost anybody i've worked with on posture um especially the the person that I've, i'm finishing up with right now um she will tell you that there's things that because she's taking classes kind of sporadically like i might see her you know three or four times in a week and then i may not see her for like a month <laughs> or something you know but she tries to practice and you know she's she's made progress and, and whatever so so i've been working with her for a while but it hasn't been like a consistent like you know thing um necessarily but over that time she's noticed especially with certain details of the sort of back area um and and with the uh sound she's noticed that there's certain things that she wasn't able to hear before that through 
like playing with Russian, playing with English, getting my feedback, um, really focusing on trying to produce the proper posture rather than just like hear the proper posture, um, that it it helped to further develop her ear, ears. And now she, when she makes certain basic mistakes, like instead of saying, uh, uh, if it sounds more like, uh, 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 or something like it's like push forward or shallow or something, she'll immediately notice it and she'll, she'll correct herself. So she hasn't gotten to the point where like she can do the sound automatically without thinking a hundred percent of the time, like a native might. Um, but she has gotten to the point where she can hear those details and be able to correct them. Um, and sometimes she has a little trouble correcting them, but she definitely hears it. Um, and that that didn't come from any special sort of ear training. It came from trying to develop the posture itself. Um, so when it comes to the posture, I, I think the ear training and the production go hand in hand. You learn to hear it as you learn to produce it and vice versa. And to some extent, that is true with the sounds and with, say, like the intonation and the rhythm as well. Um, but the posture is the posture. And we're comparing, say, like English posture to Russian posture, English posture to Arabic posture, whatever your native language is, right? Um, where with a sound, uh, you don't have to have a particular posture uh, or even be able to produce the sound in order to hear the difference, um, which I guess technically could be true for mouth posture as well, but it's going to be a lot subtler because um, like two languages, for example, might have eh, right? Like eh is a pretty common sound uh, or e, e, most languages have e. And if you listen to say like the Spanish e versus the Russian e versus the English e versus the German e, they all sound like e, right? Uh, or the Japanese e. But if you really, really listen, you get down to the details, there's either going to be a little bit of difference with like the exact placement, the exact shape, and or most likely the exact posture underneath the sound. Um, and it's usually that posture that that will create that slightly different quality to the sound. Um, so it's it's sort of on a, on a, a more fundamental level where the the ears and the mouth are more like uniformly connected. Uh, in a, uh, a practical way, I think, um, where if you're doing sounds, you should learn how to uh, hear the difference between them. Because if if you're doing like eh versus ah, and you try to practice that without fully being able to hear the difference between them, then you might develop bad habits. And maybe like most of the like half the time you do ah, you end up doing like halfway eh, ah, like eh or something, which is a common problem a lot of people I've worked with have because their language doesn't have ah, and they don't ever get down into actual full ah. Um, and then they talk to an English speaker and we're not sure if they're making the sound eh or ah because it's halfway in between. Um, so you should definitely need to focus on the ear training first so that when you do produce the sound, you can tell, oh, I'm halfway, I'm not doing the sound right. So I think it's, it's it doesn't apply quite the same, I don't think. Uh, if not teaching, what are you going to do then? <laughs> That's a million dollar question. I, I have many things I want to do. Um, I have some directions I'm, I'm heading in. Uh, I've always had many things I want to do. Um, I will tell you guys one thing. So at the beginning of the year, I was spending a lot of time on this. Um, and it's sort of, I've still kept my eye on it. It's still in the back of my mind. I've hit some roadblocks and I've been frustrated. But um, I really think that the like, I don't like to use the word calling because, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I don't really like that word. Um, but if, if there is such a thing as a, as a calling or whatever, um, for me, so I happen to be good at languages. I happen to be good at English teaching. Um, I happen to be good at explaining things, not just, uh, with English. Like I've, from other sources, I've gotten uh, really good feedback on like how I explain things or whatever. So, um, those are some skills that I have um or some some talents that i have whatever whatever you want to call it um but the the thing that i i feel you know so if if no matter how i say it, it's not going to come out the perfect way that i want it to come out but um uh, the simple way I, I i've i've described it to people is um you would think that if there's something that you have naturally done or tried to do tried to pursue uh maybe not consistently maybe you know 
and whatever. But if, if, if it's from a very early age, right, you would think that like before you get affected by the world and, and all its practicalities and, you know, like not getting a degree in philosophy, which I did, which is, you know, which I th actually think that's very practical, but that's a different topic. <laughs> um, I think everybody should have a, de uh, have a degree in philosophy. Um, that aside, uh, you would think that if, if, if you have been grab have you, if you've gravitated towards something from an early age, um, that that is probably something that you should consider developing and pursuing, right? Because it's, it's, it's a natural sort of pull, right? Um, before people tell you, oh, you should become a doctor so you make lots of money. <clears throat> For me, so I have many, many, many interests, which has been the bane of my existence because it pulls me in like 10 different directions at once. Um, and I've developed a decent ability to, you know, when I get a strong urge to like, oh, let's practice the guitar. It's like, let's, let's not do that <laughs> because that's more of a distraction. And I've gone through many cycles of, you know, starting things and stopping things and starting things and stopping things. And, um, just cause I have so many interests. So I've learned to kind of control that, which is good. But, um, the one thing before anything, uh, the one thing that I, I've come back to it multiple times over, over time. Uh, but it's the one thing that maybe I have kind of felt the strongest about, um, also the hardest thing for me to do, ironically, um, is storytelling, which I'm not even going to go into that because I can easily spend like the next hour just trying to unravel my mind on this topic. Uh, but we'll just we'll say storytelling. Um, the first time I ever tried to write a story, I was eight years old. Eight years old. That's kind of the first thing that I ever tried to do. Uh, <laughs> you know, like you know, when, when you're eight years old, you usually like you go to school, you play games, you hang out with friends, you do whatever. And I did all those things. Um, but I started trying to, uh, to, to write a story and it was very short lived. <laughs> um, the only reason I remember it is because for some reason, uh, like I wasn't interested in drugs or anything, but for some reason I, I, I wanted to, uh, write a story about a, a, a like a, a kid who is struggling with drugs. I have no idea why. Maybe it's because we had D.A.R.E. Uh, if you don't know what D.A.R.E. It is, it's, it's like an anti-drug education thing that, um, you know, a police officer will come and talk to a, a classroom of, of elementary school students about, you know, oh, don't do drugs, you know. So maybe that, that's why it was in my mind. I don't remember. But the only reason I remember why I was trying to write, write a story at all was um, because uh, <laughs> being a, a uber good boy that I was when I was a kid, um, I went out so the the computer was in my mom's room I'm sitting at the computer i was like oh i want to write this right i started trying to write it but i felt like i had to get permission <laughs> it's probably gonna be probably gonna be really wholesome to a lot of you i felt i had to get permission <laughs> uh to write a story about drugs or, or that had you know talk of drugs in it um because that's such a no-no right um and so I, I went out into the hall and my mom was talking on the phone in the living room she was talking to her friend and I very patiently waited because I didn't want to interrupt her. And I very patiently waited and waited and waited and waited. And it probably wasn't as long as I thought it was because, you know, I was an eight year old, but it, I was standing there for at least five to 10 minutes waiting. <laughs> and eventually she noticed me standing there and figured that I wanted something. So <laughs> she asked me what I wanted and I asked, can I write a story that has drugs in it? And she was like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I was like, cool. <laughs> so then I went and I started writing and eventually I stopped. <laughs> um, I was really big into Dragon Ball Z fan fiction when I was in middle school. I had like a like a 50 page story that I, I hand wrote. Um, so, yeah, I've that, that's kind of been the biggest thing, but I've always been pulled by different things. Um, and I, I feel like storytelling is whether that's novel writing or script writing or whatever it is, storytelling in some form, um, like is particularly like say like fantasy stories or sci-fi stories, those types of things. Um, Cause those are the genres I'm most interested in. Um, that's, I feel like even if it's difficult, that's the direction I should really push myself in and, I've actually this year, especially at the beginning of the year, I learned a lot about story creation and, and got a sort of framework in my my mind. And I went back and watched the whole first season of Sword Art Online, 
uh, which is one of my favorite animes of all time, because I knew that that because I, I found this like this universal story structure. It's it's kind of like the hero's journey, but it's it's a little different. I'm not going to go into all that. Um, but I was like, I want to see if if Sword Art Online follows this like basic universal storytelling thing, because to me, it's such a good anime. And in like every single episode and for like the anime overall as a whole, it was just like point after point after point after. I was like, oh, my God, it follows it so perfectly. And I'm sure the guy who wrote the story, he wasn't intentionally like, oh, I have to craft this, you know, whatever in this way. Um, but any good story that you find, if you apply this particular formula, formula to it, you're going to see most, if not all of the steps. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is magical and amazing. And I was like totally nerding out on it. Um, so that's kind that's in my mind. As I said, in, not on, because on would be like, I'm actively thinking about it. In would be like, it's there. <laughs> I may not be actively thinking about it at the moment, but it's 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 present and something that I'm generally thinking about, but maybe not uh, actively contemplating. It's fine distinction with the meaning between those. But anyway, um, storytelling, yeah. That's the direction I want to go. I haven't been super successful on that yet, but um, that's, that's what I have my eye on. Um, and uh, I'm trying to work it into some other things, but uh, right now, again, just like when I left you guys, when I left you guys, it was much more pressing, but right now it's a little less pressing, still very pressing. I got to get my finances sorted out. Um, when I left you before I had a massive tax bill that I was behind on that like I needed to <laughs> work like crazy to, which was my fault, but I needed to work like crazy to, to get up on that, um, which I did. Uh, but I still have like other, you know, like I'm not in the best financial place still. And so, um, as I said, that takes most of my time. Um, and I, yeah, a lot of time, a lot of energy. Um, so uh not a whole lot of progress on that front necessarily but that's the direction i want to go yeah um okay <sighs> i'm starting to run out of time i'm technically i'm supposed to go at 1 30 is 1 30 yeah 1 30 so i have about an hour keep that in mind i'm not going to be here for like six hours or anything um also again uh, nobody's asked about the, uh, <laughs> the books. <laughs> um, there's links at the beginning of the chat. Uh, I will also put them in the description. Um, but I haven't, I don't know where, to, where the description is right now. Um, oh, there's an edit button. I don't want to click it though. Cause I don't want to break anything. Um, anyway, continuing on, uh, do, 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 do. Punk in Russian is good. Um, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I haven't heard a whole lot of uh, Russian music. Um, Russian is a language that I want to learn. I don't know if I ever will, but if I do, uh, I'll look up the punk for sure. <laughs> um, but uh, how do you pronounce the ED sound in walked through? I've had problems with ED pronunciation before consonants. Do you just drop it? Okay. Good question about ED. So uh, the pronunciation of ED depends on what's before it. Um, and your question is ED before consonants. Okay. So we're talking about what's after it, right? Uh, now, can what's after, can there be linking things that affect it? Probably. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not thinking of anything, but. Um, so like if if the sound before it is a T or a D, which the T would become flapped, but if there's a T or a D before it, uh, unless you enunciate, then the E would not be silent and it would be like id. So like um, uh, wanted, right? Or wanted, in that case, you can drop the T in because NT plus vowel rule. Anyway, details, details. Um, if the sound before is not a T or D and it's voiceless, then you pronounce the ED as just the T sound, walked, right? Because voiceless, voiceless makes it easier to pronounce. Uh, I know this isn't your question, but I'm making sure everybody's on the same page, <laughs> like I always try to do. Um, if the sound before the ED, and of course the E is silent, right? So it's not walked or something, it's walked. Um, if the sound before the ED is voiced, um, so if we say like decided, okay? Um, or sorry, that's a D, so it's we're gonna actually say the id. Um, 
if it's a uh, with a, a g, so instead of walked, if we say bagged, okay, the e is still silent. Um, so there's, uh, with there's going to be a couple exceptions like naked, where we do say the a, you just kind of have to memorize those cases. But 99% of cases, if it's a k, if it's a voiced or voiceless before the ed, uh, or anything before the ed, the e will be silent unless it's a t or a d. If it's voiceless, there's a voiceless sound, then the, it'll just be pronounced as, the ED will pr be pronounced as a T. If it's a voiced sound, the ED will pr be pronounced as just a D. Okay. Walked, bagged. Okay. The sound after it. Uh, so if you have difficulty just producing a particular combination of sounds, that, that's just a combination problem. It shouldn't have anything to do with the ED. Um, but you say I've had problems with ED pronunciation before consonants, so consonants in general. Um, um, yeah, notice, of course, we can get like a flap or a D type sound. If I say walked it, walked it, it'd probably be more of a D. Might not flap because of the K, but um, there's a plane going up. You guys can still hear me. Um, if you say walked through, so walk through there's certain things that we can do especially in the presence of a th we know that with the th in particular there's also the dental t or d replacement that we tend to use especially in tricky places to to link things that can really make things a lot easier to say um, there's multiple ways you can say this if you fully enunciate it walked through walked through and it, that actually can make it a little easier to say and you might hear somebody do it that way not just for clarity but to actually make it a little easier to say even though we have to take a little time to push out the t and push out the dh this particular case can actually be relatively an easier option to to say um and you have the added bonus of clarity so you, you might hear that you know relatively frequently but um can we say uh, i walked through walked through so i'm doing a quick t and then just switching to th or th, either whether it's dental or an actual th. It's a little trickier to do because you kind of have to have everything like right in place and be able to do it quickly. But walked through, walked through, walked through. I'm sort of, as I release the t, I'm sort of doing this. So walked, th, th, th. okay. So you, the way that you release, it, if you just like walked through, it's going to be a little harder to do that, right? It's clearer, but that's we would sort of flick it like that. Um, you could also do walk through. So I'm doing walk. I'm sort of stopping the K. I'm going straight into the dental T. I'm not even going up here at all. And then I'm releasing from there. Because remember, if there's like a T before a TH, you can actually link them into the same spot. So if I say like it through, walk it through, it through, it through, I could just sort of stop it there and then push out the dental and we'll understand that there's a T. Here, I'm sort of stopping it on the K going there and because we're stopping it on that voiceless k which the t is voiceless it allows us to sort of bypass the t through what would normally be a, a sort of t here um it's this weird thing that allows us to speak a little more easily and quickly um so you can actually try stopping the k walk and then before you release the k you need to be already up here so you hit here first and then before the air comes out you go here and then push the air out walk through walk through um and that should help <laughs> um walk through through that voiceless yeah so uh voiceless voiceless uh, a dental t right or the voiceless uh version of that um walk through walk through um if you do a regular th then you're gonna have to release the k and you're not hitting the t and so now it sounds like walk through present tense Right. So the only way that that works is if you do the modified um, instead of a regular TH, you do the dental uh, T and stop the K there. Otherwise, it's just going to sound like present tense. So it's a little trick we have. Um, there are probably other cases. I know that's just one example, but hopefully that explanation kind of gives you some ideas of, of how you would um, maybe work things. I don't know if you have another example that doesn't have a TH. Um, but uh, Rafal is a Polish name. The L is like W. Ah, so okay. So it's it's sort of like a. Um, this reminds me of Portuguese because an L at the end of a word in Portuguese would be more like a W sound. So 
I imagine you also flap the R because <laughs> many languages do that, but like Rafal, Rafal, something like that. Probably sounds Portuguese. <laughs> I have no idea how it was out in Polish. So, um, Portuguese, yeah, exactly. See, Portuguese. Uh, <laughs> and some dialects of British English, I guess. Uh, majoring in marketing. Awesome. Have fun. <laughs> I hate marketing. <laughs> um, more content would be always nice from you. Uh, yeah, it's coming. Even unedited one, I'd watch that. Um, yeah, I know. I'm, you're, you guys are probably going to see a lot more unedited stuff, especially the shorts, because that's the easiest thing for me to make. Um, but yeah, that aside, uh, there will be some some longer form videos and stuff. Uh, it's the content that you're going to see is probably going to be a lot more shorts than than the long form content, just because they're so much easier for me to make and I can record them in my car. Um, but uh, you will see some long form content. Uh, I have to bounce. Just wanted to check in. Oh, fluent American. Well, he's probably already bounced by this point. But <laughs> yes, uh, thank you, thank you. Um, good to see you. Um, Ostan Jeff Company. Hello, everyone. Hello, welcome. JB. Hello, hello. Uh, about there not being a voiceless flap in American English. It's definitely not mandatory. But I've heard many people pronouncing utterance final T's as. <laughs> Uh, all the technical terms, utter, utter and spinal tease as voiceless flaps or taps. So I like the coat. What? Co coda? Co 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 I don't even know how I would physically produce that. As soon as I, as soon as I try to do a flap, it, it wants to come out as a D. It wants to be voiced. So it'd be coda. <laughs> and there would have to be something after it, like, like, a, like a schwa or something. If I co cota 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 ta ta I like the cota 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 like that I like the cut cota cota something I don't know that's not even really flapped I don't think that's like my body is physically rejecting that like it, it it's like how how am I supposed to do this um, that maybe maybe you can give some other examples or, or a, a video that you've seen somebody do that in. I don't know. That's maybe I'm just not understanding how that would be produced. Um, but okay. Uh, hi there. Aesthetic vibes. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, love your pronunciation videos. So Burgett Berg. I have no idea how to say it. Sorry. <laughs> um, hopefully I said that right, but uh, welcome. Yes. Love your pronunciation videos. Good, good. Thank you for the feedback. Um, uh, can you recommend? And sorry, guys, I usually get caught in stuff. So if it takes me a while to get to your question, <laughs> it is what it is. I try to get through things, but I, I, I get caught in, in explanations and things. Uh, can you recommend some of the best books or online courses to master American English pronunciation? Uh, I mean, so I don't have any books uh, or courses on pronunciation aside from what I have on YouTube. Uh, Outside of that, um, I really have no idea. Uh, Rachel's English is apparently pretty good, <laughs> but I don't know. Like, I, I I don't really pay much attention to other resources, other things, because I'm usually like making my own stuff. Um, I don't know. Um, also, the I, I have issues with a lot of resources, especially if they use like IPA and stuff. I know it's not perfect, and it's something, but I have a video about why you shouldn't learn the IPA and, and this and that. And so I, I, most other, other courses or whatever, like I'm going to have an issue with it, even if I did know about it. <laughs> um, so th there's just, there's nothing I'm particularly aware of. Um, Fluent American, the, the other teacher here who's commented, um, he seems to have a pretty good teaching method. I don't know if he has any products or any books or anything. You can maybe check out his website. Um, but uh, he seems to, to know what he's talking about. Even if we disagree on some of the details or, or ways to, to explain things, um, we're pretty much on the same page. So, um, yeah. Uh, common mistakes English learners make in short videos would be cool too. We're not sure pronunciation videos. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Good. Um, link to the ebooks isn't working. Oh, thank you for that feedback. Um, I will have to <laughs> fix that uh, in the middle of the live. Okay. Uh, did you click on the first link or the second link? Because one is a zip file. They, they both go to Google Drive, and you have to download them. One is a zip file. One is just a folder that has 
the books you can download whatever you want so which one i'll try to keep an eye on on your response here uh which which link or is it both links aren't working because they should be working i don't know why they're not working and what does it tell you like does it what what error does it give you um I can try to fix that, but I'll wait for your response. Um, common mistakes English learners making short videos would be cool. Um, that's one thing I've thought about. Something really short and easy for me to do. Um, I'll probably do that for sure. Um, so good, good suggestion. Um, what about short pronunciation videos? So I have like the shadowing videos, which I also plan to make some more shadowing videos. I know I have this like big epic beard and whatever, but you can still see my lips. Right. You still see things move around. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's more about the 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 audio than the visual, but you know, I include the close-up of my mouth to to kind of help. Um the uh so there's that. Um short pronunciation videos, uh, like tips and stuff. I mean, I, I can do that. Um that's not really a problem. Uh Again, it would probably just be for my car, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put that. So we have common mistakes, pronunciation. Um, I don't know if mistakes, you mean like pronunciation mistakes or like general mistakes, because I'm thinking like general, um, but I, I, I could do both of those. Um, let's see, I don't see anything about the link. Uh, do, 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 do. <clears throat> do you save the books that are free? Okay, so the the at, at the top of this um, chat, if you scroll up to the top, I posted two links. Uh, they're they're links to my books or the ebook forms. To download them, one is a zip. You download the zip onto your computer, unzip it, uh, and you'll have everything. Or the other link, I think the first link, uh, no, the second link, whichever one. One of the links is um, just it'll take you just to Google Drive folder that has. The, the files for each book and stuff and whatever. Um, and so you, you just download whatever you want. Um, so if you're like on your phone or whatever, it might be easier to do that instead of the zip file. But again, uh, if, if anybody has any issues, let me know the issue. I'll, I'll try to fix it. I'm still waiting to hear back from um, Bridget. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong again. Um, maybe they left. I don't know. Uh, but uh, if anybody has any issues, let me know and I'll, I'll try to fix that. Um, because right now I don't know what the problem would be. Um, I have anyone with the link. Let me check this one. Share. Yeah, it's set to anyone with the link. So there shouldn't be any problems. Um, but OK. Uh, out of all nasal consonants, just only the, oh, well, yeah, let me go. I was going to say welcome, Miguel, but I was like, oh, Miguel's already been here. <laughs> Uh, out of all nasal consonants, just only the consonant N can be dropped. Uh, well, thinking of specifics is not my strong suit. Um, so if you drop it, you're going to have to nasalize the vowel. Partially nasalize. Don't fully nasalize. Partially nasalize the vowel. Um, because then we'll still hear it there. So instead of saying on, if I say on... On, it's on on the table on the table i'm not actually doing an n um then we'll hear the end there even though it's not there but if you just say it's ah the table <laughs> that's that's not gonna work um so you can't completely drop it uh you just don't have to actually go into the end to, to produce it in a normal way uh for the m and the mm, there are cases i've noticed where you can at least not fully do the sound um, I can't think of any cases, uh, any examples on the top of my head. Let me see uh, if we do um, immediately. Let's see. Do it immediately. Do it immediately. 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 Yeah. So it, it sounds kind of lazy, and I don't. You don't have to try to do it this way. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. But um, if I'm speaking quickly and kind of lazily, and I say like, "Do it immediately." Do it immediately. Most likely my lips are going to close and I'm just going to do an M anyway, but um, they don't necessarily have to fully close. Do it. So again, I'm partially nasalizing. If I don't partially nasalize, if I say like, do it. Now it just sounds kind of like a wha or something. It's, it's like, it doesn't work. But if you partially nasalize because the lips are coming together, they're so close like that. 
will perceive that there's an M there without actually fully closing to the M. So for the N, you don't even have to get close to it. For the M, you at least have to get close to it. Um, for the N, it's probably the same thing as the M. Um, again, I'm just horrible thinking of examples off the top of my head, but in all cases, you need to partially nasalize the vowel, otherwise it doesn't work. So that, that's the most important thing. Um, now, if you do an actual M, N, or N, or N, you can, and we commonly do still partially nasalize the vowel, but then you don't have to partially nasalize the vowel. That's not a standard thing that you have to do if you're actually pronouncing the sounds, um, the M, N, or N, uh, completely. Uh, so I'm pretty sure voiceless flaps are allophonic. Uh, it can sometimes happen when AT at the end of an utterance with AT or when AT is at. So we're either we're, we're missing something there. Uh, perhaps, uh, again, if you can give me like a, a video, <laughs> uh, like if I had some sort of like sound clip to listen to, I could better address that. Um, I can't download your books. Okay, so Miguel is having problems. Zip file. Okay, so Bridget says this is a zip file. Um, general mistakes. Okay. Uh, why is there a problem? Uh, okay, so people who are having problems with the links, what does it tell you? Does it tell you, like, does it just not give you the option to download? Does it say file not available because on my end everything is set up correctly it says uh, anyone with the link can view um there shouldn't be any problems with it so don't worry if if there's some problem that that we don't get fixed before the list stream ends i will attempt to continue to fix it and make community updates so you guys will be able to do it i downloaded the zip just fine okay so he's not having a problem so that tells me that it might be on your end um maybe something with google drive access download the logic proposition one everything's in good okay so some people are having problems some people aren't um that makes me think that it is a a problem accessing Google Drive, maybe. Um, I can't even download them with zip file. Interesting. Um, so again, if, if you can give me, like, what does it show you? What does it tell you? Does it just, like, you just click on it and, like, it doesn't bring up anything? Nothing happens? Like, like what is what is the thing that's that you're seeing? Um, and I can try to fix that. But it seems like uh, the links themselves are working. It might be uh, accessing the links that's the problem. Uh, for some people. Um, okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, so how does the sound? Yeah. This is one case where the IPA is mildly useful. Um, sound the same as the schwa sound. Okay, so the UH, so uh, me, oh, we also have that weird Polish L, so I'm, I know it's pronounced as a W sound now. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Rafał. <laughs> so it'd be like me, me. I don't know if it's a cut or ch, but me, cow, me, chow. Sorry, I don't know how to say that, <laughs> but uh, welcome um, to answer your question. So when I write uh and when any native writes uh and when most teachers write uh, that represents the schwa. Just, just so you know, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's teachers and resources out there that use that to refer to the uh sound, which is the IPA symbol that you wrote. Um, so just just so that's clear, because <laughs> I read that as does the sound uh uh sound the same as the schwa sound, which would be uh. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's a technicality. No, it does not. It does not sound the same. Um, or is this an, uh, this an incorrect impression that I should work on? So okay, these are two completely different sounds. Now, for a English learner, they might sound very, very, very similar. And even in the mouth, they are relatively close together. Um, I don't know where my vowel charts are right now, because since I closed out my website, maybe I don't know if there's a Google Drive link to resources somewhere in the description. Hopefully, maybe if not, I'll fix it later. But I have vowel charts that you can look at um, that show where everything is. Uh, that aside. So the 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 schwa sound 
So there's the schwa and there's the upside down V. If you look up my video, um, The Truth About the Schwa, it'll explain how those are connected in American English and how they're actually the range for one sound. So that's like the, the uh. So if I say like um, uh, it's a car and we reduce a to uh to a schwa, it's a, it's a. <clears throat> It's a, it's a, it's a car. Okay. That would be a, a schwa, what I call a true schwa. Then there's upside down V, IPA symbol, uh, which is more like fun, fun, fa, uh, 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 Okay. Now, in reality, Americans tend to use these interchangeably. We don't quite hear a difference most of the time. Um, it will depend more on stress. Um, again, check out my videos about the truth about the schwa. I also have a follow up video that further proves that um, using an example from a song. Uh, so that's that. Okay. There's the, the schwa and then the upside down V, which are not, uh, right. The, the little horseshoe symbol IPA, um, the, uh, sound, I call that the high schwa. Okay. Which is confusing to some people. You can look up my video about the high schwa. Um, but I call it the high schwa one because it's a convenient name <laughs> instead of calling it the horse horseshoe shape symbol. <laughs> um, but I also call it the high schwa because in my mouth, it feels like the schwa is here. It's sort of in the like the back middle of the tongue. We sort of sit down. Uh, 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 uh. It's our center of gravity for the posture. It's sort of the core that the whole uh, language is, is built around. That's why it's the most common sound in the language. Um, and then uh, if I were to try to like take the position of that uh sound, just sort of move it up and back a little bit to where it's on the front of the back of my tongue, right? So there's the back of the middle and the front of the, the back. So front of the tongue, middle of the tongue, back of the tongue. And then we say front of the front, middle of the front, back of the front, front of the middle, there's like a line, right? And then front of the middle, middle of the middle, back of the middle, line, and then front of the back, middle of the back, back of the back. Not quite going into the throat, it'd be like back here, right? So English doesn't really have any sounds back here. Um, but if you go to the front of the back and you sort of get a little bit of tension up here. You're almost sort of squeezing, like going up from uh in the middle, and you're sort of squeezing up onto the front of the back of the tongue. Um, that gives you uh, like in book, right? Uh, uh. So they are two completely different sounds, but they're they're close to each other. Um, yeah. Hola. What? I don't know that word. <laughs> okay, hola. <laughs> Fernando. Welcome. Uh, congratulations for 10,000 subs. Thank you. I, I, I only worked for half of them <laughs> or I guess two quarters of them, two quarters, two thirds of them. Uh, yeah, the rest just kind of showed up while I was gone, <laughs> but yes, thank you. Um, Finn do always already almost and all right ever come out as yeah. So I've answered this before. It's, it's a good question to, to, bring up again and especially for other people who haven't heard my answer to that um so uh, yeah it's supposed to be always but you can say always uh or actually so th there's there's four ways to pronounce most of these so you can say always with an l colored ah all you can say always it's a little bit lazy if you're enunciating we don't necessarily want to say it that way but if i'm just speaking yeah i, I always do that always always you actually could just do an ah without the l it's fine. Um, you could say um, always with an L colored O, 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 like o, old, but with no D, always. Or you could just do a regular O. You could say always. Again, if you're enunciating, we probably wouldn't necessarily do it that way. It's a little bit faster, a little bit lazier, but there's nothing wrong with it. Um, so there's four ways. Always, 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 already 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 almost 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 all right all right all right all right that one no that one can't use the o but it can use the ah and the all <laughs> um so it doesn't apply to all of them it applies to most of them but it doesn't apply to all of them um so when you see al at the beginning of words like this um, you usually have those four options. If not, you should at least have the two options of either ah or all. And again, the ah without the L part is a little bit lazier. Um, if you're enunciating, uh, if you're, which again, you could always use it, but 
we'll say if, if you're in a more formal situation, at least probably include the L, but otherwise you kind of just do the ah. Um, but if you're speaking really slowly, uh, I would always include the all or the, the, the L part. Um, so like, I always do that. Maybe I say, I always do that. Seems maybe a little bit. Eh. So, but normal speech, fast speech is, is fine to do either one. Uh, Helen's family faces. Yes. See if we have any updates on the links. Um, can someone send the link in chat? Uh, link, well, the link should be at the top of the chat. Um, I can resend them. Maybe that'll fix the problem. Let's try this. Okay, so we're going to copy link. Let me double check that. Share, copy link. Okay. And actually, hold on, because I wonder if I click it here. This shouldn't be the problem, but maybe it's a technical glitch. Okay, so that is the link to uh, the folder that has all the books and files and whatever. The zip link, if you want to download it all as a zip, which you can then unzip on your computer. Let's see. Share, copy link will be this one. So the second one is the zip. Um, so let's see if that works. Hopefully, if not, <laughs> um, then we'll uh, continue to try to fix it. Um, I don't see any updates. No, OK. <clears throat> Where are we? We're all over the place, guys. And I'm running out of time. Keep in mind, I'm running out of time. Um, OK. Can the word start come out as start when it's not the main verb of the sentence, i.e., why don't you start doing it? He started working yesterday. Why don't you start doing it when you start? When you start? When you, when you start? When you start doing it? When you start doing it? You started, you started working yesterday. OK. <laughs> Finn always has the best high-level, fast pronunciation questions. <laughs> um, I, I, I definitely know that Finn's ears work, for sure. Um, so as usual, Finn, yes, it exists. Uh, it can come out that way. This particular case, you have to be speaking, or I, I would think, um, I don't want to make a 100% statement, but this is like I'm pretty much 100% sure you have to be speaking very quickly. Um, even normal speed, it, it wouldn't work. Like if I say, um, uh, why don't you start doing it? Why don't you start? See, the, the T kind of wants to still come out there. Why don't you start doing it? Start doing it. Why don't you start doing it? I guess it doesn't sound too bad. It doesn't stand out too much. Maybe because it's not the main verb. Uh, wait, it is the main verb. Is it? Let me start. Well, I guess doing maybe. I don't know. Technicalities, whatever. Uh, for whatever reason, it's. I I wouldn't recommend trying to do that. If you're speaking really quickly and it ha you happen to not hit the T, I guess it's fine. Um, not something I I would like. Nobody has to care about that. I wouldn't have I'd recommend anybody pay attention to that. If it's something you notice, fine. Um, I don't. You don't have to do that to sound more natural or anything. So, uh, best case scenario. It'll sound great. Worst case scenario, somebody will have more difficulty understanding you if you don't do it right. So um, not required at all, but does exist technically. Yes. Uh, what about the T and still? Does it ever still come in a still? Yes, probably, yeah. Probably uh, many cases of ST. Um, I'm still working on it. I'm still, 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 still working on it. So see, and sometimes that T will still lightly come through anyway. I'm still, I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. Again, it's a little, it's, it's lazier. It's faster. It exists. I wouldn't recommend trying to do that. Just know that it exists. Don't be confused by its existence. Um, it's good to have a lot of interests. Uh, I wish that you find the best thing for you to do. Wish luck and Well, thank you very much. Um, I disagree that it's good to have a lot of interests uh, <laughs> because, at least with the way my brain works, uh, it has literally been, as I said earlier, the bane of my existence. I, I really, I, I. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not an admirer. Um, I uh, I envy P 
people who are just like obsessed about one thing and they can just like they love doing that one thing and that's all they want to do like all the time obviously that can bring other problems with it <laughs> but i would much rather have that problem <laughs> um because yeah reasons anyway middle of the tongue is responsible for attention right uh yeah, i meant for quality attention oh okay so the, the got it um and then what was your original question about the qualities <laughs> uh do, 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 do. have you thought of doing the four qualities for all sounds okay uh no so my original plan for the next step in what would have been the mouth posture course here on youtube was as i was talking about like i was already like i was developing the lesson and you know i posted some pictures and stuff um was going to be like to go through every single sound and and be like okay this is the posture bubble and i do think that that still would be a good useful resource um which i may at some point make uh putting the qualities into all of that i mean addressing I wouldn't do like, okay, so this is like the quality of nasality with the E sound and the quality of nasality with the E sound. Like it would be incorporated at the base level underlying each individual sound. So like when we talk about like, okay, the E shouldn't be particularly nasal unless you have a reason to partially nasalize it before a nasal sound, right? But that aside, right, that that's a special case. So the E sh by itself shouldn't have any special case to be nasal. So if you're doing an E and everything is in place, right? If if you sound you know this nasally, then you're too nasal on your 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 e, and that will probably apply to most other sounds that you're making because maybe your language is more nasally, right? So uh, the four qualities more apply to like the baseline underlying posture, uh, and, and affects the quality of the sound through that. Um, now you might have in a particular sound or uh, in your sounds in general one of those qualities that's off because again maybe your language is more nasally or whatever, like Portuguese. Um, and that would need to be addressed either in that sound or in all sounds. Um, but again, that goes to the underlying posture and and, and uh, fixing it at, at the postural level. So trying to include the four qualities in every single sound, I think, is is maybe overkill, but it probably also not very practical. It's kind of like really getting way into the weeds in a, in a way that's not useful. Um, because it would kind of just be included in the posture itself um, if you're doing the posture correctly. Uh, now i know i had like the exercises where i was doing um maybe this is more what you're thinking about like if i do like an e that's like maybe a little more nasally a little less nasally and like hearing the difference between that that also might be a good resource but <laughs> like maybe if the channel makes a bunch of money one day and i can hire other people to do that i'm not going to do that like i don't that's not something that i want to do at all like that yeah um and i it seems like such an edge case for the most part. Um, so I don't know. Uh, middle of the tongue is responsible for tension. I'm not sure what you mean here because there's, well, I suppose you mean specifically in American English uh, or like the, the tension is primarily held in the middle of the tongue, uh, which uh, I guess in some sense we would say is true, yes. Uh, uh, I don't know if there's something I'm not remembering from my four qualities video uh, related to tension, but um, yeah, because the like many teachers say like oh relax open blah 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 blah, but your your posture configuration um, feels relaxed to you, right? And the sounds you make, especially like your center of gravity sound, is gonna feel relaxed to you. Um, what most teachers are trying to point to because to us it feels really open and relaxed because it's that's our posture and our, our center of gravity um but what they're trying to point to is um getting that more space getting more open so like if you have to open the top or lower the body of the tongue um to get more space or uh, loosen up the top of the throat area you might have to add tension in another way right so if say like this this uh soft palate appears sort of flap area if you hold this tighter in your language and you have less space your configuration and your language is set up to do that and so it's going to feel relaxed to you that's going to feel normal so you have to actually push open and hold open you're going to have some tension there that you wouldn't normally have compared to your normal your native language um 
because you already have tension this way, you need to get some tension this way to open it up. Right now, you don't want it to be tense necessarily, but you're going to have to use the muscles to hold it more open. Right. So there's going to be some sort of tension there. Um, but if we're talking about like the, the primary place where I guess, I guess the, the tension of the mouth gathers or whatever, the, the primary focus, I guess you could say that would be in the middle of the tongue. That's where uh is, is our center of gravity. Um, and everything kind of moves around that. So yeah. Um, I don't know if I would describe it as as being responsible for tension, but I, I, if I understand your question right, I, it, it, it makes sense to look at it that way. And if it helps, then yeah, that's fine. Uh, thank you very much for the books. No problem. Uh, why don't you do content similar to Rachel's English to be as popular as she is? Well, number one, I don't want to copy people. Um, <clears throat> copying to some extent is perfectly fine and even in some cases unavoidable like if i make a whole course about the sounds of american english well there are other teachers that have courses about the sounds of american english so <laughs> you know yeah obviously there's some copying going on there because we're talking about the same thing um but uh in general i i'm some students i've had or you know some of you guys have asked me like oh hey this teacher says this or you know even like a rachel's vi english video like what do you think about when she says this blah, blah. and so that's why that's the the way that i'm mostly familiar with other people's content but as a general rule i try not to watch other people's content because uh i don't want it like everything's everything's a trade-off uh I prefer, even though I could get some benefit from that um, in various ways, I prefer to, uh, because I have the particular way that I, I think about things and that I look at things, um, I prefer to uh, try not to be influenced by what other people are doing. Um, and I might get some ideas here and there, especially if it's like a point that I want to uh, talk against. So like if one, you know, a lot of teachers say, oh, X is true. Um, and I'm like, well, yeah, like I disagree. <laughs> then, you know, I can res respond to it, but I'm not copying in that case, right? So uh, at the end of the day, if we're both English teachers and we're both talking about pronunciation, we're both talking about the same parts of pronunciation, we are going to end up having videos on the same topic. So I'm going to end up copying her anyway, um, I guess, indirectly, <laughs> just because we're making content on the same things. So I already am making similar content. I guess, like, what do you mean specifically? Like, because I guess since I don't really pay much attention to her her actual content, I don't know exactly what she's doing. <laughs> so maybe if, if you have a specific example of something that, that like one or two types of videos or something that she does, then uh, maybe I have a better idea of what we're talking about. Uh, can you also tell me different options, how to pronounce push to the, missed the, still TH, yeah. also agreed with. Uh, so with push the and uh, missed the, so you can hear I'm, I'm kind of enunciating a little bit there and pushing them out, which is, again, one, one way to make it a little easier here, just enunciate it. Um, special case where the enunciation actually could be a little easier. Uh, but you can also do exactly what I said before, except in this case, because so if it's okay, if it's why no, I guess that would be the same. Pushed, okay. SH is voiceless. Missed S is voiceless. So it's still a T, which means that all the same things that we talked about uh would apply to the K, except the K is a stop sound, right? Okay. So push the so now in in the special K where there's special case where there's a K. You stop here, but then you release here, right? If you release here and then go here, it's going to sound present tense, right? So that's a special case. Without the K there, <laughs> you don't have to do that, right? So you're just going to do a regular linking of there's a T sound before a TH sound. Just put the T into that dental T position and then release from the dental T position and don't actually do a regular T. So push the. So I go push the easy right here so before what was it um walked through that's a voiceless uh th so it would be a dental t right so when you release it you want it to be voiceless so walk th 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 instead of the 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 
Okay. Um, here, so I know it can be confusing because you see an ED, but we know that's actually pronounced as a T sound because the SH is voiceless, right? So pushed, but now the is a voiced TH, so it would be a dental D. So that doesn't change anything with like how you're connecting things or anything. All it means is that when you release that position, it's going to be voiced. So it needs to go in voiceless because there's a T push. Okay, notice I had voiceless, voiceless, voiceless all the way up to the close. If I had voice push, you hear that voice as I close. Okay, so no voice up to the close, but then when you release it, you have to add that voice. Otherwise, it's going to sound like a, a, a voiceless TH or a dental T, right? So if I say push the, it's not going to sound right. It needs to be push the. So no voice and then release with the voice. Push the. Um, same thing with miss the. It's going to be exactly 100% the same because S is voiceless. Um, miss the. Miss the. I missed the bus. Okay. Nice and easy. Um, also agreed with. Okay. So agreed with. Agreed with. Sounds a little over enunciated in my opinion. Um, you can say it that way, especially if you are enunciating. That's fine. Um, begged for. Begged for. Please note that D. Okay. Fine. Um, can we do this a different way? Let's see. Agreed. See, agreed with, agreed with, agreed with, agreed with. Interesting. Okay. Uh, begged for, begged for, begged for, begged, begged, begged for, begged for, begged for. Hmm. Agreed on, agreed on, agreed with, agreed with, agreed on, agreed on, agreed with. Huh. <laughs> okay. Begged about, begged about, begged about, begged about, begged for, begged for, begged, begged about, begged about, begged for, begged for. Okay, so it's not quite the same. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's probably going to be other cases where it's like, hey, this detail is interesting. Um, with begged for, you can do that D very, very lightly. I wouldn't flap it. If I try to flap it intentionally, it seems a little bit different. It could probably still work, but I don't, it's not supposed to be a flap. So if I do, I, I'm just, instead of like begged for, right, where I'm, there's clearly a good and then a duh. Um, if you just really lightly do that D, not to where you're flapping it, but you kind of like go into the D and then you just quickly kind of like let it push out instead of like just tapping it. Begged for, begged for. Div. Four, four, four. Or actually here, big four, big four. You can actually make it more of a T because of the F after it. Usually it's the opposite. Is that true? Am I I'm thinking of getting wires cross? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's usually this way. Yeah, usually problem or problems. Uh changes happen with the flow of speech. Um so this will affect that. But here we have a case where the thing after it is affecting the thing before it. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I'm out of practice. <laughs> um, but the F in this case can affect the, the ED ending. So even though the G is voiced, you can actually make the D as more of a T. So there's actually several options here. If you say like, like baked for, I wouldn't push out as a strong T. It's not baked because it's going to start saying weird, but like baked for. It's just like a light little T that's really not aspirated. Uh, that can that can happen. Um, so there's different little tricks we can use there to make it a little easier. With agreed with, you can actually, probably because W is a semi-vowel, you can actually flap the D here, which is something that I wasn't really aware of before, but it makes sense because it's a semi-vowel. I don't really consider it a semi-vowel necessarily, but um, sometimes it's useful to look at it that way because it can explain things like this. But um, you don't have to do that again. You could do a light D, um, like just a really, really weak. That's not quite flap. Like agreed with, agreed with, agreed. It's not flapping. Or if you say agreed with, you have to kind of like overlap the flap and the W. So the lips are kind of either already coming out or already are out. Like agreed with, with, Um. So, yeah, I see why you're having some issues. <laughs> um, but you kind of just got to like like listen really closely to how natives like maybe find at least one, but preferably like two or three samples of native speakers with whatever problem you're having 
like whatever combination problem you're having and see how they do it. Um, keep in mind if their audio, if their audio resources designed for language learning, they're probably going to be enunciated and that's not what you're looking for. Um, so you want, it's going to be harder to find, but um, if you like find it like in a, in a TV show or some sort of video that people are just naturally speaking and you can isolate it, um, you can use it as a reference. Now, again, at any time, it could maybe come out enunciated. And so if you find that, then okay, whatever. But if you, if you notice, oh, hey, there's a case where it wasn't like fully enunciated, this is kind of what he was talking about. Then, um, yeah. But either way, uh, just, you know, mimic nat natives at the end of the day. Um, fired last. That's another one. Fired last. Fired last. This one is, is actually a DL overlap. That's a, a special link. Um, fired. Dl dl dl. So you go into the D and then all I do to do the L. Um, so the L is the, I want to say the, yeah, it's, it's the only sound that breaks the posture this way. Okay. Because we have our anchor that we, we, we connect um, to the, the inside of the teeth for our posture. But the L will actually bring the tongue in. Now, technically, you don't have to completely do that, but that's a little tiny side note. We're going <laughs> to ignore that. Um, so the L is going to pull the tongue in. So when you go into a D, what, in order to make the D, you, the sides have to be out, and the tongue comes up to block the air so that the air can't come through. And then you you keep the sides attached, but you let the air go through. Right. And you can you can come off like this. That's fine. But the sides are going to stay attached unless it has to come off for like the next sound, like ah, you can break the, the connection. Um, but when we do when you go into an L, right, if I do an L, it can be in the same position. It's probably gonna be a little little forward. You don't, actually don't want to do the L here, really. If it's if you do it kind of flat, it's fine. But it's probably going to be more up here or even on the teeth. That's fine. But if you if you go into the D position, all you really have to do to, to do the DL overlap is keep the tongue where it is, keep everything else where it is, pull the sides of the tongue in to narrow it. Now, the back of your tongue might have some problems. You might have some other postural problems going on. But if you just pull the sides of the tongue in, it's going to create now an L sound. So you actually, you can also slide forward a little bit as you do that to get into a better L position. But all you really have to do is just, if you're going from a D to an L, um, just pull the sides of the tongue in. Fire and you can't see a bit fire dull, dull, dull. that's how we make that dl sound combination dull, dull, dull. all i do is i just pull the sides in from the d position that's it dull, 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 dull. so now there's probably a little something else going on in order to help form the l sound i feel a little shift in the back of the tongue as well but that's part of the l sound so um i'm talking about like the main difference between the d and the l itself um Okay, anyway, uh, I found that there are two kinds of tension, something I call raising and lowering. There may be even more kinds. Uh, yeah, I, I read one of your comments. Uh, I happen to see one of your comments about that. Um, that probably is tied to kind of what I was talking about with like holding it higher, holding it lower. Um, so there's a soft palate, which you can hold higher or lower. There's the tongue height inside the mouth. So there's the jaw openness, which you, you need a certain jaw openness for whatever language american english does tend to be a bit more open than other languages but the jaw is not the important part okay um what's important because i can if i still hold the tongue high in my mouth but my jaw is more open so normal american english jaw i'm just going to hold my tongue higher posture is the same i'm going to speak normally i'm just going to try to hold especially from the back i'm going to try to hold my tongue higher in my mouth Okay, so now I'm going to talk like this. So immediately, you'll notice that my voice changed slightly. I sound a little bit different. Um, I'm trying to speak normally, except just raising this up. It's hard to do certain sounds. I feel extra tension on the sides here. Like I'm, I, I have to kind of, it's weird. It's weird to hold like this. And even like my lips feel like they're getting a little tighter, which is I'm not trying to do. It's just happening. Um, so that's not how you want to sound, right? Um, now it's hard for me to hold it higher and like open for an ah because my mouth doesn't want to do that um but uh you want to it's not about opening the jaw as much you do need to get the jaw open enough but it's not about opening the jaw as much as it is lowering the tongue inside the mouth especially the back of the tongue so you want this up you want this the tongue you want it to be lower sort of hanging off of the inside of the teeth um, like we, I've mentioned before, um, I'll make, I'm going to be making more content about that later. Um, so now we have all this space. Like you should feel like the, 
if, if your language has high here and low here and you shift it correctly, you should feel like there's way too much space in your mouth. Right now, it is possible to overdo it. I can get even more space, which would be too much, right? I'm like this, or that open hangs up even more. All right now, I'm I'm kind of I'm starting to break certain things. So there's a balance, right? You don't want to go too far. Um, but what feels too far for you probably isn't. It actually might not even be far enough. Of course, there's also the top of the throat tension where you might hold tightness here or hold a little high. We don't want that either. So you need to sort of release that and maybe hold this a little more open. Um, but mostly it's going to be the tongue height and then this, the soft palate. Um, so yeah, there's actually raising and lowering here. There's raising and lowering here. You want to raise this, lower this, and then open this. Um, and if you do those to the right degree and the right combination, you'll sound very open and very clear. Um, and then you just have to hold the center of gravity here and keep everything moving around that while holding those in place. That's the hard part. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would agree with you. Maybe you're you're talking about something slightly different, or you're you're thinking about it slightly differently. But um, as far as um, I would think, we're we're on the same page there. Um, technically, I'm out of time, guys. Here, so what I'm going to do really quick, I'm going to try to power through the rest of the comments and questions to finish up. If you have any other questions, I'm sorry, but please don't ask them because I don't have time. Uh, Bridget is leaving or has already left. Sorry, I didn't catch that. I'm always I never see when people leave because I'm always so far behind. I got the ebooks. Thanks for sending the links. Perfect. It works. Okay, good. So the link should be working. I'm going to kill as well. Okay, I think I know what the problem was. It was, was, it was a, a glitch on with Google Drive. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for coming, Bridget. Um, hope you enjoy the books and all that stuff. Uh, let me power through the rest of these really quick. Uh, okay. Uh, so one minute. Wait, 120 minute into the video of Victoria Justice sings tell me what you or tell me that you love me uh, uh i don't think i have time to look that up um okay tell me that you love me victoria justice okay so that's the whole name of the video all of that she pronounces the T and it as a voiceless flap. So one minute, 20 seconds. Let's see. Okay. So what I'm hearing there, 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 it does seem to be a flap, but I'm still hearing voice. Um, it doesn't, I would not say that's voiceless. Yeah, there's definitely voice there. Um, maybe it's, I guess, may, possibly, potentially, maybe there's like less voice. <laughs> I don't know the, compared to a regular flap D, but it just sounds like a flap D to me. Um, which is kind of weird here. Yeah, it's definitely not a T. I'm not hearing a T or, or a, like a T, T, T. Like, the really weird thing here is actually, I if I listen really closely, I, I my ears are telling me there's no D there. But two seconds, one to two seconds after it plays, what I hear in my head is a t as if it's just a regular t not a flap t but a regular t so my brain is actually adjusting what my ear just heard after the fact which is very very interesting um but yeah listening to i've just listened to it like five times it's definitely voiced it is a bit of a flap but it's definitely voiced um i'll also give you a music I, maybe you just gave a music example but music is uh Weird things can happen in music with pronunciation. Um, but uh, again, not I wouldn't say that's a, a voiceless T. Um, now, maybe, who knows, maybe your ears on this particular detail are a little better than mine. But to me, that is so clearly, obviously not a T. <laughs> or to you, I, I think to you, maybe it's so clearly, obviously is a T. Or, or I don't know, maybe you're just not sure. But to me, like I, I have no doubt in my mind that that is that, that there's voice in that. Um, like maybe some machine could measure it and tell me that there's no voice and I would be absolutely shocked. <laughs> but 
yeah, uh, I swear this is not the thing that only happens in songs. I'll see. You mentioned it yourself. Good. <laughs> I just don't have a clip somehow doing it well. Yeah. Um, anyway, so if you find another clip, you can maybe, um, I don't know, post it in a comment. Like you can comment under this video, uh, the, the, the replay or whatever. And I can maybe try to address that uh, more later, but that's definitely voiced. Um, I've noticed a lot of times native speakers say you're gonna dropping the G in gonna. When, yes. That happens, yes. Uh, again, it's fast speech, it's lazy speech. Um, if you're speaking really quickly, sure, you can do it. I don't recommend trying to do it. Um, these are really high level things that noticing, especially for your listening skills, are really, really good, but you don't have to do to sound more natural. You don't have to do to sound native. Um, they're just really fast, lazy things that, that natives do. Um, so if I say, like, uh, you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it. You're gonna, I'm saying, run a, you're gonna, you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it. It's just fast, lazy speech. Not recommended. Um, your choice, but you have to be speaking quickly uh, if you're going to do it. Um, and make sure you can link everything properly. If you have problems with your R, it might be harder for people to understand you if you drop the G. Um, so make sure everything else is is on point first. That's a higher level thing that like once everything else is good, uh, or at least as good as enough as, as you as you want it to be, and, and you, you can still sound clear then uh, you can add that on top if you want, but it's not required. Uh, I downloaded Logic. Okay, good. Everything seems good. Oh, yeah, quick note about the Logic of Prepositions book, even though nobody will probably see this comment <laughs> um, this late in the video. Uh, I am aware that there are typos and there are little things in because I tried to edit it. It's 400 pages. I probably mentioned this before, but I don't want people to like be looking and be like, there's all kinds of typos in here. It's because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still haven't uh, been able to get it, give it to an editor. Um, eventually, there should be a version two of the book um, that will be edited thoroughly. Um, so if you find anything off, that's just a reflection of my um, lack of editing. <laughs> um, just a little note there. Do 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 do. Uh, the first verb is, or the first syllable is stressed. Oh, interesting. So I would naturally stress the second one, right? So Rafa. See, I want to do an L now. Uh, Rafael, Rafael, I guess, maybe. <laughs> that was basically a flag. <laughs> Rafael, Rafael, Rafael. I don't know, something like that. I don't know. Uh, does the uh in just ever reduce to uh in faster speech? Kind of uh, between fully enunciated. Yeah, so uh, there is a bit of bridging between um, uh and uh, uh that can happen, um, in at least in some words. So just if you say just i just did it 100 percent perfectly fine it's a very normal way to say it you can use a uh or uh it doesn't matter um even if you're speaking clearly you don't it, you don't have to reduce it it's just an alternate so if i say like i just just or i just they both sound 100 percent perfectly fine maybe there's some natives out there that are like eh, one sounds weird to me as a native speaker with a neutral accent they both sound 100 percent perfectly fine so it uh, doesn't matter in some words, such as just. Yeah. Um, can you drop the vowel together? Uh, just, yeah. You're going to be speaking pretty quickly there. Um, if you intentionally try to do it that way, especially speaking more slowly, it's it's going to just come out where like, I just, just, now it even it sounds a little accented to me, actually. So if you're speaking quickly, I just, just do it, just do it. Yeah, just, just, just. And you can also usually we, often we drop the T, right? And so you, you just be like a J and an S. Just, 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 it's fine. No problem. Uh, but again, fast speech, lazy speech. Uh, I also have problems with the, that W threw me off. You did W slash, which is the shorthand for with. So I just saw the W and I was like, what? Yeah, problems with the word road. Okay, my R sounds good in other words. Uh, and the... Oh, and Colorado sounds fine now too. I had problems with it. Very nice, good. Uh, but this word just sounds weird. Well, then you have a problem going from R to O. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's also the word row. There's the word um, Rome. There's the word uh, uh, well, roll would actually have an L, but there's still an O involved. Um, so it could be either the R and the O combination specifically, uh, and or it could be. Uh, going from O to D with that R so close to it, sometimes that causes extra problems, combination of like the first and the last sound. Um, in which case you just have to practice saying that particular word. Uh, so yeah, it is what it is. Um, 
you got to figure out how to get from the R to the O. That that, that that's all it is. <laughs> like, yeah, road road. Yeah, same pronunciation. Good. Um, network syncs good. Okay, can you also tell me the placement of your tongue when pronouncing S H and C H? Uh, so uh, well, placement of the sound, I assume, because yeah. Okay, so shh, it's it's on the front of the tongue. We have the teeth, right, hair, the alveolar ridge, the bump, right, and you go up in the rest. It's going to be roughly around here. Okay, I have a lesson on this. I talk about this in the lesson. If you go to the the sh lesson, uh, the sh j lesson, or the ch j lesson, I talk about how to make them. Um, but they're going to be around here. Okay, so very high. Um, the sound is created by the air flowing through here. There's a little bit of a certain shape to it, and whatever. You have to get the right quality. The posture will affect it a bit as well. But um, even if your posture is off, it'll still the sh and the ch will still probably sound pretty solid, um, just because of how those sounds are. Um, if you're going to do the ch and j, you have to go to the td first, and then push out through the the t or d um, as you blend them into the sh j, because the ch is a blended t sh and a j is a blended d j. Um, so sh, ch, sh, ch, d, j, d, j. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, hopefully that, that, that's enough. You can go watch the videos. Uh, again, I'm trying to power through these. Sorry. Can the word as reduced to as? Yes, it can. Obviously it reduces down to is as, uh, very often. I was wondering, yes, yes. As is another possible thing. Um, I don't think it's as common, but I have noticed it. Um, I don't think it says, it says, it says, it says, it says, it says. It says. <laughs> I think I'm saying it says, it says, it's as, it says. They can be pronounced exactly the same. Yeah, possible, especially in faster speech. Um, again, if you're slowing it down a bit, probably not eh. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it exists. It definitely exists. Um, there's a compromise between enunciation and haste, I guess. Um, yeah, there's, again, there's there's ranges, right? So there's like fully enunciated, there's super fast and lazy, and then there's, depending on maybe the vowel or the consonant, it might be both, it might be just one of them, be dropping a sound. There's usually degrees of, of like one or more changes that can potentially happen. Um, so in this particular case, uh, the Z is going to stay the same, uh, but the vowel maybe has, you know, in total between the, the ad and it uh has like four options right so um but again it's within the range so it's supposed to be ah that's the clear normal pronunciation full pronunciation that'll happen commonly in normal speech but a lot of these reductions will also happen in normal speech um the a i would maybe put a bit more on the faster side so yeah and it's a little complicated but uh, gotta go. Da, da, da. Okay, so do pull and hull rhyme for you. Yeah, so the way that I teach this, um, so there is no L colored schwa. And remember, when I say schwa, that includes the upside down V because it's the range for one sound. So, uh, fa, uh, 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 there, and I know there's a difference, and I know I can produce a difference. To me, I hardly hear a difference, but I know that I, I can hear a difference there. Um, the two sounds, right? And in the speech of some Americans, right? Neutral speakers. Um, this is one of the other neutral accents, the one that's that's most commonly taught, uh, as well as in uh, I believe British English. Uh, you can have uh, an L after a schwa or an L after the upside down V, and it would be more like L, 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 something like that, right? Um, then there are words that use the um, the U uh plus the L. Right, which would be like, oh, I guess, um, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, which it's it's really hard for me to do that. Um, the way that I speak, the way that I teach, and that I still think sounds very neutral, very natural, um, is the there the uh, th this is where I this is one reason why I say that the 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 dark L is the half L vowel, because if I just try to do a P and a dark L, no vowel in between them. I'll get pull. If I try to do an H and a dark L, no vowel between them, I'll get hull, pull, hull. Okay. Only difference is the P or the H. So, um, and this is one of the English hacks, right? It makes it easier for you to speak and to, um, to, uh, to learn uh, the language because 
now instead of having this like a uh plus o or the a uh plus o or the like a uh plus o or whatever the upside down b sound is um you just have the o you just have the, the 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 dark l the half l vowel that's it you just put a sound in front of that you get pull hole coal mole dole lol right um now can you still say it the other way like you'll even hear sometimes maybe for me that like well if i say some of these words not like pull will it'll never happen um but if I say um, like mole, you might sometimes hear me say mole. It, it might happen to come out that way, but nine times out of ten, <laughs> I say mole. Um, and that's that's perfectly fine. So uh, that would be the easy way to do it. Uh, like I just heard people say, you could just drop the ed and it sounds just like the present tense. Like you know if it's past or present because of context. That can happen, yes, but that depends, right? That number one, if the context is clear, sometimes context isn't clear. Uh, and number two, it depends on the exact sound and combination. It's the exact combination of sounds. Um, like we talked about with the k, if there's a k there, uh, if you well, hold on, walk. Yeah, if if you um, if you don't do the the dental D, right, and you just do a th, um, like a regular th. I'm sorry, the, in that case, it's the dental T walk through. Uh, if you don't do the, the dental version, uh, even if you stop the K, and you don't do a, a D here, you just drop the ed completely, or the the T that you drop the ed ending. Walk through, walk through. Doesn't matter if I stop it or not. It's going to sound present tense. Right, so there, there's there's no context that's going to make that sound past tense. Um, that particular combination of sounds, the only way that you can technically drop the ed is if you do the dental um, t there for the th. And that's just because there's a th there. If there's no th there, if I say walk um, uh, before, well, that's also a stop sound. Uh, if I say walk uh, someone there, right? Walk someone over there, um, like to walk someone to a place. So if I say walk someone. If if I do uh, walk someone walked someone okay, you can't just drop the the the, the t for the ed ending because it's going to sound present tense. So context is not always sufficient, but context can be sufficient depending on the combination. Now, off the top of my head, I can't think of a case where the particular combination of sounds would allow the context to be enough, um, but that does that does happen. Yeah. Uh, what about full skull lol call? Full, skull, wool, 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 wool. So I can say wool slightly differently for some reason. I don't even know what I'm doing there. That's weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, but um, I can I can also do it the same way. So it, it doesn't matter. Um, it's probably a bit of an artifact, uh, but um, coal, yeah, coal, wool, yeah. So all of these can be pronounced exactly the same. You just just do uh, initial consonant or consonant cluster plus dark L. Uh, and do any of those words have any lip rounding? Pull, hole, pull, hole, full, full, skull, 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 skull. Well, well, so the W, I mean, the W needs lip rounding. <laughs> cool. No. So, um, yeah, because it's, it's commonly taught with like like the uh, right? The lips, uh, uh, uh. But the lips aren't required for that sound. Like, uh, 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 Okay. It's a common thing that happens. It's not required. Now, again, I'm not even doing the uh. I'm just doing a dark L. So there's no lip rounding in dark L. So more the half L vowel, as I call it. So no lip rounding required except for the W because that's part of the W. Uh, no, yeah, that does sound very voiced, but there are people that pronounce that T in the same way she does, but actually unvoiced. Well, I, I'll have to hear it. I don't know. Um, okay, are you two word names usually what? Okay, so are oh, probably your two word names um, like Los Angeles, South Africa, Middle East. Uh, any pause between them? Yeah, so just like uh, any two words that you might see next to each other, it doesn't matter if it's if it's a two word name. All the same linking and flow rules apply. So I'm not going to say Los Angeles, like it's going to sound weird. Like why are you saying it that way? Los Angeles is going to sound like San 
Los Angeles, uh, South Africa, tha, tha, South Africa, South Africa. Unless I have a reason to really try to separate them, like South Africa compared to North Africa. You could put a space there, maybe. It doesn't have to, but it could happen. Um, usually, it's, it's probably just going to sound weird. Uh, Middle East, Middle East, least, least. Um, I'm linking there with a full L. You don't actually have to do that, but just for simplicity, Middle East. Yeah. Um, if you do Middle East, yeah. I guess it's okay, but no reason for it. <laughs> um, we're probably just going to connect them together. Your streams are such a haven. I'll miss this. Yeah. Um, I know, right? <sighs> oh, no. Come on. Almost missed that. Okay, good. So I have to go to work now. I'm going to pause that for a second. You guys almost made me miss work. What the heck, man? Um, anyway, yeah, so I definitely have to go. Um, yeah, I miss the streams too, uh, but I don't know. It is what it is. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and like say, give me money, but at the same time, like, because I need to be working, like if I could do a stream and like through super chats or whatever, like say if, if I made like at least 10, $15 an hour through that. I would probably do streams every week because I'm actually like, <laughs> you know, otherwise I would be working. That's what I need to be doing. That's the part of the, the big part of the reason why I'm not going to be doing the live streams is because I have to be working. Um, so, you know, if, if you guys are like, Hey, <laughs> let's give super chats then, you know, but obviously like, I'm not going to ask you, Hey, you know, regularly make sure you do your super chats every week. Otherwise it's like, it just seems kind of, kind of weird. And I don't know. So, Maybe as the channel grows, if I try to do a live stream at some point in the future and we get I get a bunch of super chats, then, uh, you know, it'll it'll be um, enough to to justify the time. Um, or maybe if there's a time where, you know, I'm not needing to work so much, then I could do a live stream or two or whatever. But yeah, it is what it is. I, I got to make money, guys. Got to make money like everybody. So uh, you're welcome, King Lion. Thank you, guys, everybody. Um, Again, use the links for the free books. And um, yeah, uh, I will see you guys in whatever video I see you in next, which will probably be a short. <laughs> Have a nice day. Thank you, you too. Bye.